and our uh, ending of this battle, this war uh, in Afghanistan by August 30th, 31st, having all of our troops out, and then yesterday, remembering 20 years later, um, 9-11, the day that terror struck, terror struck us on our own soil. And over the last couple days, this week, as we're gearing up for tomorrow, all of these um, services and all these um, opportunities, to, opportunities to remember uh, what happened that day and to remember those who gave their lives on that day. We think about, um, as we observed yesterday, we think about the sacrifice of so many. We think about the first responders who went in and never came out and gave their life that day. We think about, over the last 20 years, the soldiers who have fought for our freedom, that we don't have to live in fear. We remember those who gave the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom. And we thank God today, as we've sung already, we thank God for our freedom. We thank God for the freedom to come into this place to worship Him freely without any fear of anyone coming in and interrupting us, anyone coming in and saying, you can't do this. The question this morning, though, is this. Do we praise God enough? Do we give thanks enough? Is there any time in our life that we could say thank you to God too much? Is there a limit to our praise and to our thanksgiving? A Sunday school teacher asked her class what they were thankful for. A little boy says, I'm thankful for my glasses. And the teacher thought, that's an odd thing to be thankful for, but why, you know, especially if you're a little kid. And she says, why are you thankful for your glasses? He says, well, it keeps the boys from fighting me, and it keeps the girls from kissing me. <laughs> he was thankful for a little thing. So this morning we asked the question, what are we thankful for? Sometimes we need to be reminded of those little things and thank God for them. What about us? Do you only see the negative things in life? Do you look around in life, maybe read the newspaper or get on the internet, turn on the TV, and all you see is the negative? Can we find some positive things in our life to give thanks to God for? 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, Give thanks in all circumstances. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Give thanks in all circumstances. Praise God in all circumstances. That doesn't mean we thank God for our circumstances. You know, you get a phone call or something, a tragedy happens, you don't necessarily thank God for that circumstance, but you thank God for being with you in that circumstances. Corey Ten Boone in the book, The Hiding Place, she relates an incident that God taught her to be thankful in all circumstances. Her and her sister, Betsy, had been transferred to the worst German concentration camp, prison camp, they had ever been at, uh, named Ravensbrück. On entering the barracks, they found the barrack crowded and infested with fleas. That morning, their devotional was 1 Thessalonians 5.18, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So Betsy, Corey Ten Boone's sister, says, we got to give thanks to God for this barrack. And yes, we have to give thanks to God for the fleas. And Corey said, no way, I'm not doing that. There's no way I'm going to praise God. Thank God for these fleas. They're biting. no. Eventually, she gave in to her sister and gave thanks for their living quarters. What they found out over the next couple of days, they were able to have Bible study and prayer meeting all the time. No guards ever came into that barracks. They, they weren't interrupted by the guards, and so they were able to have worship services, Bible studies, prayer meetings. 
And several months into this, they realized that the guards wouldn't come into the barracks. You guessed it, because of the flea. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Psalms 34, let's read this together. We're going to read the whole psalm today. Psalms 34, 1 through 22. It says, I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. My soul will boast in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, my children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good days, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking lies. Turn from evil and do good. Speak peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil. To cut off the memory of them from the, from the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. A righteous man may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. He protects all his bones. Not one of them will be broken. Evil will slay the wicked. The foes of the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems his servants. No one will be condemned who takes refuge in him let's pray together father we thank you for today we thank you for your word that reminds us that we have to give thanks in all circumstances and father we pray that as we study this psalm that you would instill in us a desire to to shout praise to sing praise to be thankful in all circumstances so, Father, we pray this morning that you'd guide us through our time together. In Jesus' name, amen. Look at Psalms 34, verse 1. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. The psalmist the David writes this psalm that his praise will always be on my lips. And then I want to recommend that in this passage, he gives us three reasons why his praise can always be on our lips. The first thing is this reason why we can give praise to God in all circumstances. The first one is this God answers my prayers. God answers my prayers. He hears my prayers and he answers my prayers. Look at verse 4. It says, I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. I sought the Lord and he what? Answered me. Look at verse 6. This poor man called and the Lord heard him. Look at verse 17. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. One reason why we can give praise today and be thankful is because God hears our prayers. He answers our prayers. Look, we're going to come back in Psalms 34, so hold your hand there. But look over at Matthew chapter 7. Matthew 7, beginning in verse 7. Jesus teaching His disciples here, he says, Matthew 7, 7. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? 
Or if he asks for a fish, we'll give him a snake. If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you, for this sums up the law and the prophets. Look at verse 11. If you then, though are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father in heaven give good gifts to those who seek him? Those who ask him. We can give praise to God. Praise can always be on our lips because God always hears our prayers. He hears us. This past week, um, a friend of mine um, died of COVID. Um, he was a baseball coach there at Wayland where I work, and a um, 67-year-old uh, man, and both he and his wife um, got COVID. His wife is, had pre-existing conditions. Um, she has an autoimmune deficiency uh, disease, and, and uh, she was in the hospital, and they call, and, and Tommy was in the hospital at the same time. They call the family in and say, um, you, you need to come Wednesday because Susan's not going to make it. She's just not going to make it. So the, all, the family comes, and of course, we're all praying that God heals her, prays on Wednesday, um, calls the family on a Wednesday, and Sunday she gets out of the hospital. Fine. Post on Facebook, we prayed for a miracle, we got a miracle. Tommy's still in the hospital, but not doing bad. He's doing okay. And then all of a sudden he has trouble breathing. And they can't get his oxygen level back up. And one week from her getting out of the hospital, he dies. Just the opposite of what they expected. If any of those two had gone to the hospital, everyone put their money on Susan not coming out of the hospital. But it was Tommy who didn't survive COVID. And last Thursday, we had the funeral, and Tommy's uh, daughter-in-law, Kelsey, gets up, and she speaks for the family, and she thanks the family, and she gives these memories of Tommy. And she talks about that miracle, the miracle sitting on the front row. And she said, we prayed for another miracle, but God didn't answer as we wanted. But we know he heard our prayers. And he answered our prayers. He didn't answer it like we wanted it. But he answered it, and we trust our Heavenly Father. Now hear me say this, that we can praise God. His praise can always be on our lips because we know He hears and He answers our prayers. And sometimes they may not be like we wanted. He may not answer like we want. But His praise can be on our lips because our Father can be trusted. He can be trusted. John 15, 7 says, If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever it wish and it will be given to you. You see, the Lord hears and answers our prayers. Praise Him. So that's the first reason we, His praise can always be on our lips. The second is this. The Lord saves us from our troubles. The psalmist here, David, says, verse 6, back in Psalms 34, verse 6, he said, This poor man called, and the Lord heard him, and he saved him out of his troubles. Look at verse 17. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. Every one of us will look at, keep going. Verse 18, it says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Verse 19, a righteous man may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers them from the, him from them all. He protects all his bones. Not one of them will be broken. The Lord saves us in the midst of our troubles. Every one of us experiences trouble in life. 
It's because we live in a fallen world. Evil and sin are present in our world, and we live with trouble and sin and evil and all kinds of negative things. A.W. Tozer said it this way, The fall of man has created a perpetual crisis. It will last until sin has been put down and Christ reigns. Until that time, the earth remains a disaster area, and its inhabitants live in a state of an extraordinary emergency. What kind of troubles have you experienced in your life? Did you ever get turned down from a job? Did you ever get laid off? Did you ever get fired? Did you ever lose a loved one, a friend to death? Did you ever get stabbed in the back by your friend and betrayed? Did you have an accident, car accident? Did you ever got a phone call with dreaded news? Your son, daughter strayed away from the faith and made terrible mistakes. You ever made terrible mistakes? You have trouble with your finances? The list could go on and on and on. And hopefully, as I'm speaking these things, your troubles have come to your mind. That every one of us have been through something, some kind of disaster, some kind of trial, trouble. And some of us are like this 30-year-old woman in Luderworth, England. She was fined for driving south on the northbound side of the road. And she told the officer, I thought something was wrong. The traffic seemed to be coming the wrong way. And maybe that's you today, that the traffic seems to be coming the wrong way. And no matter what you try, you're, you're, you're running against these obstacles and you can't seem to find your way. And you're just swimming upstream and every turn, every turn you take, there's another obstacle and everything seems to be going wrong. Hear what the psalmist says today, that I can praise God today. Because he's close to the brokenhearted. He saves those who are crushed in spirit. Matthew chapter 11, 28 through 30, Jesus says these words, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. A teacher, a Sunday school teacher, asked her class as they read this, says, my yoke is easy. And she asked her class, her children, says, what is a yoke? A little boy said, a yoke is something that you put around a, a, an animal's neck. Then the teacher asked this question, what is the yoke that God puts on us? And a little girl says, it's God putting his arms around our necks. You see, God desires to put his arms around us and comfort us and give us help and hope in life. He guides us through the storms. We yoke up with him and he pulls his strength. He pulls us through the storm. And I know right now, as a church, you're thinking, where are we going? What are we doing? Where we're we headed? We just lost our pastor. What are we doing? It's troubling times. Hear what he says to you today. Take my yoke. Yoke up with me, and I will carry you through. That's good news today. Did, did Chris Levin take God by surprise? 
Did it go, whoa, I didn't know that was going to happen? No. So in the midst of our troubles, in the midst of our wondering, in the midst of our questioning, God is big enough to see us through. 1 Peter 5, 5 through 7 says this, All of you clothe yourself with humility toward one another because God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourself, therefore, under God's mighty hand that He may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. In the midst of your trouble, in the midst of your wondering and questioning, cast your anxiety on Him, for He cares for you. So, how can our praise of God be on our lips continually? He answers our prayers. He carries us through our troubles. And the third and last thing is this. He blesses us with good things. He blesses us with good. Look at verse, uh, chapter 34, verse 7 through 10. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. The lions may grow weary, may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Get that. Those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. Every, James says it this way, James 1.17 says, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights. An older lady who was well known in the community for her faith, she would come out on her porch every morning and say, and just sing, Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Well, her neighbor next door was an atheist, and she, he, he would come out, when she'd come out and say, praise the Lord, he would come out and say, there isn't a God! There isn't a God! She'd do that every morning. Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! There isn't a God! Well, one day, hard times hit, and her Social Security check didn't make it to the end of the month, and she was in need for groceries. She comes out, just like every other day, and she says, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And then she begins to pray, Lord, I'm, I'm, I've hit a, some hard times and I need some groceries. Please, Lord, can you help me? The neighbor hears her, so you know what he does. He, he goes and buys her a bag of groceries, and he goes and puts it on her doorstep. So the next morning she comes out to do what she's done every day, and she comes out and says, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. She sees the groceries and says, praise the Lord, Lord, you heard me when I cried. And the neighbor jumps out of the bushes and he says, aha, I told you, there isn't a God. I bought those groceries. The lady starts jumping up and down, clapping her hands and saying, Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Not only did he hear my cry for groceries, but he made the devil pay for them. <laughs> Psalms 31, verse 19. How abundant are the good things that you have stored up for those who fear you that you bestow in the sight of all on those who take refuge in you. Get that. How abundant are the good things that you have stored up for those who fear you. Psalms 84, 11. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who, whose walk is blameless. Psalms 103, 
2 through 5. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits, who forgives all our sins and heals all our, all our diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and a compassion, who satisfies your de- desires with good things so that your youth is reno- renewed like the eagles. This morning, I'm not preaching a prosperity gospel. I'm not just saying if you love God, everything's going to be perfect. He's going to bless you with everything you ever need. You're never going to be in want. Just a minute ago, we said sorrow is going to come. There will be trouble. So I'm not preaching a prosperity gospel. What I'm saying to you today is this. His greatest gift is himself. When we sing, God bless America... We're not singing so that our bank accounts can be full, so that we can live in our nice, comfortable homes and have no trouble. That's not what we're singing. We're singing, God bless America. Send your spirit upon this nation so that we might be an example to those around us, so that you would receive the glory and honor due your name. Amen? It's not so that we can have everything we need and just live fat and happy and just go about our merry way. It's so in this passage, he says, the one I just read, Psalms 103, so that you may receive the glory due your name. What good things has the Lord blessed you with? What good things has the Lord blessed you with? Salvation? That should be enough, right? Your lips is your praise is ever on my lips because I remember that I've been redeemed from the pit. I've been saved. I've been redeemed. I've been bought. If you're here this morning and you've never given your life to Christ, I invite you to do that today. The Bible tells us that we are separated from God because of our sin, but He sent His Son to die on the cross. He paid the price for our sin so that you and I might have abundant life. If you've never by faith put your trust in Jesus, why not today? What about us? Have we taken our salvation for granted? Maybe we've been a Christian a long time. We're just simply going through the motions. But today we'd say, your praise will ever be on my lips. For I've been bought by the blood of the Lamb. What about our our family? Our health? Our jobs? Or stuff. Charles Wesley wrote his first hymn just three days after his conversion. That hymn was, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. Charles Wesley goes on to, to write 6,500 hymns. Apparently, he was full of praise for everything that God had done for him. What about us? Do we praise God for the knowing that He hears and answers our prayers? Do we praise God for He, he carries us through our storms? Do we praise God for His many blessings? I'm going to ask you now just to pause and praise. That when you think of what God has done for you, that you would just pause and praise God for a second throughout your day and even right now. Praise team's going to come and we're going to have our hymn of invitation. But before we sing, I want you to just stop right now and think of how God has blessed you. 
and may his praise be on your lips. You pause and praise. Father, we thank you today for your many blessings. We thank you for the psalmist reminding us of how we're to praise you. So God, we thank you for today. We pray, Lord, that throughout this week that your praise will ever be on our lips. But for you are a good Father who gives good gifts to his children. And Father, may we live our lives humbly, full of gratitude, and may our lives point others to you. In Jesus' name.